Now you may never have thought about this before. But I want you to think about it this evening. In verse 18, we have five of the most important words in this entire passage. And really, you could even say five of the most important words in all of Scripture. Those five words are when Jesus says, Bring them here to me. You see, it's all about coming to Jesus. It's all about Faith and how that faith makes us available to Jesus. Amen. Faith, we're going to see, has his disciples bring five loaves and two fish to Jesus. <clears throat> now I tell you this evening, if you want God to work miracles in your life, bring him what's available by faith. That is, yourself. Come to him and watch what God can do. This time, let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Precious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for allowing us to be here this evening, Lord. We certainly, Lord, ask you to be with each and every name added to the prayer list. Lord, we ask you, Lord God, heal those that need healing, comfort those that need comforting, Lord. Most of all, we ask you to burden the hearts of those that do not know you as Lord and Savior. Speak to them, Lord, even today. Let today be the day they give their lives to you, Lord. Lord, we do love you and thank you for all you do for us, Lord. We ask you, Lord God, open up the hearts and minds of each and every person here, sitting in the pew, Lord, here in the pulpit, Lord. Those watching or listening live or that will watch and listen later. Speak to us, Lord, and give us what you have for us, Lord. We ask all this in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. <coughs> So we're going to start in <clears throat> verses 13 and 14. Paused and resumed ministry. <clears throat> Verse 13. Now when Jesus heard about John, he withdrew from there in a boat to a secluded place by himself. <clears throat> and when the people heard of this, they followed him on foot from the cities. When he went ashore, he saw a large crowd and felt compassion for them and healed their sick. So Jesus comes, or excuse me, Jesus receives the news about his cousin, John the Baptist. And we know it was John's disciples that came and told him this. We saw that in verse 12 last time. <coughs> excuse me. I want you to. Keep this in mind as we look at these two verses. Jesus already knows what's happened to John. He always has been and he always will be God the Son. And that means he is omniscient or he is all-knowing. He already knows this. They didn't tell him something he didn't already know. But they, much like Jesus' own disciples, they don't really fully understand this. So they do what they think is right and they come and they tell Jesus about John. Upon hearing the news, Jesus withdrew by boat. By himself, he went out to a secluded place. <clears throat> now, he's not running from Herod, even though if you look at some commentators, that's exactly what they say he's doing. He's running from Herod. He's not running from Herod at all. He's taking time to get away, to process the news, to mourn his cousin through his human nature, and to rest. He just needs a minute to rest. We're going to find out, <coughs> actually we already saw in verse 14, he's not even going to be alone for very long. They're following. But he takes this, even a brief moment away. Remember, Jesus is 100% God and 100% man, making him one person but with two natures. Remember, God is three persons but with one nature. And because Jesus has a human nature, he has the full range of human emotions that we have. For him not to have would mean he would be something less than human. 
He is fully human. <coughs> he must be fully human. If Jesus was anything but fully human, then He could not die on the cross in my place and in your place. He couldn't be our substitute. And if He couldn't be our substitute, we have absolutely no hope. And we are all bound for hell. Because then if He couldn't be our substitute, He couldn't pay our sin debt in full. But of course we know He is fully human and He did die that substitutionary death for us. Now there's a lesson to be learned here from Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. There comes times in our lives and in our ministries when we need to take a small break. We need time to rest and recover. Sometimes we need time to mourn. Once we've done this, we come back to what God has called us to do. We continue on doing what God has called us to do and serving Him. In Jesus' omniscience, He knew this is going to be a short break. He knew they would follow Him on foot. He knew exactly how long of a break He's going to get. He knew where they were coming from. He knew who was coming. He knew all this. But He takes this little, tiny, short break anyway. And once they catch up to Him, <coughs> excuse me, He goes right back into His ministry. Verse 14. And felt compassion for them and healed their sick. He didn't say, give me another day. Go away, leave me alone, I'm not in the mood. <coughs> no, He healed their sick. All those that came that were sick. This is a large crowd. They followed Him. And He does this, and it says very plainly here, He felt compassion for them. That's why He healed their sick. That's why He didn't say, come back tomorrow, I'm still grieving. <coughs> I'm still resting. I need more time. No, it was His compassion <coughs> that He felt for them. That's why He heals them. It is this same compassion that He has for us that made us the priority when it came time for Him to lay down His life on that cross. You see, our needs and His love for us was greater than His human desire not to die. And because of this great love that He has for us, salvation is possible for all who have put their faith in Him. That's the compassion that He has for us. That's the compassion that He has for this crowd as He heals their sick. <clears throat> so again, in these first two verses, He learns about John, what's happened to him. He took just a few minutes or, or just some time to be alone and rest and to mourn. And then He resumes His ministry. Now we'll go start looking at the miracle of multiplication. This is no doubt a passage you're familiar with, but let's look into it and see what God has for us to see. Verse 15. <clears throat> when it was evening, the disciples came to Him and said, This place is desolate and the hour is already late. So send the crowds away that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. <coughs> now, the Bible doesn't tell us exactly when they catch up with Jesus, what part of the day it is, but we know whatever part of the day it is, He is healing them up until evening time. That's where we are. And His disciples, out of concern for the crowd, go to Jesus and say, Boss, it's, it's time to send them away so they can go get food and, and have shelter. We're out here in this secluded place. They're not wanting just to get rid of them. They are genuinely concerned for the people. And we've got to remember, 
They are approaching this from a practical, worldly place or viewpoint. They're very, being very practical here. They know what they have and what they don't have. They know where they are. <clears throat> and we, would, we, we expect them to do this. This is how we expect them to approach it. And if we're going to be honest with ourselves, very likely this is how we would approach it if we were in their situation. <clears throat> if there was a large crowd gathered <clears throat> outside here and we didn't have the means to put them up for the night, we would certainly encourage them to start heading a little bit farther away where there might be hotels or somewhere where they could have lodging. So they're, they're being very practical here. It's out of concern. It's not, oh, we just want rid of them, go away. <clears throat> and it's very expected. Now, they've already seen Jesus perform miracles. But see, here's the problem with miracles. When it comes to human memory, miracles have a very short shelf life. They don't last very long up here. That is to say, once they occur, once we witness them, it's almost like they immediately start fading from the foreground to the background of the mind. Now, I can't speak for everyone here, but I can tell you that in my own life, I have seen God do things, I have seen God move in my life and meet needs in my life, and sometimes in miraculous and unexplainable fashion, but it seems by the time the next need arises, I've already forgotten what God did the last time. And I start thinking, how am I going to fix this? What am I going to do? And then He reminds me of what He did before and how all I need to do is fully lean on Him and trust in Him that He'll take care of me again. I don't know if y'all have experienced that or not, but I certainly have. So when I tell you miracles seem to have a way <clears throat> of going from the foremind to the back of the mind, it's happening here with His disciples. They've already seen Him do all these different miracles, but now they're, they've forgotten like It seems like they have forgotten what He's capable of doing. He's about to remind them of what He can do. Verse 16. But Jesus said to them, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. He's telling them to do something that He knows they cannot do. Why would He do that? Why would He tell them to do this thing that He knows they cannot do on their own? <clears throat> He's building their faith. Amen. He wants it openly stated. He wants them to openly state they can't do this. They can't feed the crowds so that when He does this, it is very clear that this miracle is done by Him and Him alone through His power alone. There will be no mistaking what's about to happen. See, He's teaching them and He's teaching us because He had the Holy Spirit inspire the Gospel writers to share this. Amen. It's not just in Matthew, it's in all four. <clears throat> it's recorded so that we can all be reminded throughout the centuries that all we have to do is trust God. See, what He's doing here in action is going to line up with what he says in what we later call Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, when Jesus says, with people this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Amen. <coughs> That's what he's teaching here. He knows they can't do this. They don't have the means. Verses 17 and 18. They said to him... We have here only five loaves and two fish. 
again, he already knew this. <clears throat> and he said, bring them here to me. And I said it in their introduction. And I want to hit on it again. Those five words are absolutely five of the most important words in all of Scripture. Bring them here to me. It doesn't just apply to five loaves and two fish. It applies to us. Bring them here to me. Is that not what the Great Commission's all about? Spreading the gospel and trying to bring people to Jesus? Now we know from John's account in chapter 6 verse 9 that these five loaves and two fish come from a little boy in the crowd. No doubt his mommy sent him out with a good lunch. <clears throat> Certainly it's not enough to feed all the crowd that's there. You see, in the hands of the little boy, it's enough for him. In the hands of the, uh, excuse me, the disciples, <coughs> it's not enough for almost any of them. But in the hands of Jesus, it is more than enough. Amen. It is more than enough. He takes what's already there and He multiplies it. And I tell you, what He does with five loaves of bread and two fish, He can and does with our talents and our gifts and anything else we have when we make it available to Him. If you make your finances available to Him, He will multiply them. Maybe not in the way you want, there will be times when you won't be able to explain because your books won't line up. I can tell you from personal experience. <laughs> what the bank says you have in your account don't line up with what you say you have in your account. God can do that. You think God can't have power over your bank account? When you give God your time, He will multiply what you're able to do with it. See, in the hands of Jesus, it's always enough. It's more than enough. We're going to see that. Those five words, again, bring them here to me. We can only imagine <coughs> excuse me, what the disciples are thinking as he says that. No doubt they're thinking, what's he going to do with this? They may be rubbing their hands. Oh, he's fixing to do another miracle. See, now they got miracles popping back in to the foremind. He's fixing to do something. We're about to see something. The most important thing that any of us can ever do is be available to Jesus. We must be available to Him with regards to being open to His Holy Spirit drawing us to Him. All of you that know Jesus as Lord and Savior know exactly what I'm talking about. When that moment finally comes when you just know that saying no to Him is not an option anymore, and you say yes to Him, you make yourself available to Him. <clears throat> and the next thing you know, your whole life has changed. Amen. You place your faith in Him. When we're available to Him, we must be available to Him and do whatever He says to do. Remember, that's not optional. If He is to be our Savior, He must also be our Lord. And what that means is, and a lot of people have an issue with it, but what that means is very simple. If He is your Lord, you are not your Lord. That means you do what He says, not what you want to do. Not do what He says when you want to do it. You do it when He says to do it. Now, are we all perfectly obedient? No. That's why He chastises us. That's why He disciplines us. Should we be perfectly obedient? Yes. yes. Absolutely. And when we don't obey Him and He gives us that whipping, the next time we have an <coughs> opportunity, I bet we do it. If you've ever had a whipping from God, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <coughs> We must be available to be His instruments and to do all that we can to be used by the Holy Spirit to draw people to Jesus. You've heard it said many times from this very pulpit, 
you may go witness to somebody and it feels like it made absolutely no impact on them at all. But what you don't realize is you planted a seed. God says, my word will not go out void. You share the gospel, you plant the seed, you may never see any growth from it. But then somebody else comes along behind you, you have no idea they're going to do it, you don't know who it is. They share the gospel and God starts doing some growing. That's how God works. <clears throat> That's what happens when we are available to God. And be His instruments. We place our faith in Jesus. And in Jesus alone, we make ourselves available to Him. And then He meets all of our needs. He meets all of our needs. I ask all of you here, all of you watching, listening, have you made yourself available to Jesus? I'm talking especially to those that are watching or will watch later on YouTube, listen or listen later. Have you made yourself available to Jesus? And if you cannot answer yes, then all I can say is, what are you waiting for? Amen. Today can be the day Amen. you make yourself available to Jesus. <coughs> Verses 19 and 20. Ordering the people to sit down on the grass, he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up toward heaven, he blesses, excuse me, he blessed the food, and breaking the loaves, he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. They picked up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve full baskets. Now, <coughs> notice first. Ordering the people to sit down on the grass. This is not a mad, chaotic scene. This is an orderly scene. Because God is a God of order. He's not a God of chaos. Jesus says, tell them, sit them down. Put them in rows. We're going to do this in an orderly fashion. And then He takes what's available. He takes these five loaves, these two fish, he looks up to heaven, he blesses the food, and he starts breaking the loaves. <clears throat> and it just seems like he's breaking and breaking and breaking. And there's no doubt that they're standing there, his disciples, the crowd, and they just keep saying, he should have done run out of bread by now. What is going on? This is a miracle of multiplication. <clears throat> Make no mistake about it. This is creation before their eyes. As he breaks and he keeps breaking and he just keeps handing out pieces of bread and fish for them to give out. He is creating before their very eyes new bread atoms and molecules. Amen. Just, I can't explain it. I don't even know how he done it, but he's just doing it. As he's got it in his hand, he's breaking it. It just, it's almost like it doesn't end. And then what does it say? He gave the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds, and they all ate and barely were have enough. No, it's not what it says. They were satisfied. You see, by faith, the disciples brought what was available. By faith, the crowd's still hanging around. They didn't go on. They didn't go back to town. They didn't go find food on their own. By faith, they stuck around to see what's going to happen. And then what happens? That faith is not just rewarded with the bare minimum. It is rewarded with abundance. Because you know, our God is a God of abundant blessings. He doesn't work in bare minimums. When we put our faith and our trust in God, God doesn't just Squeak you by and meet your need. God will bless you so much you don't even can't even fathom how much He's blessed you. God doesn't do bare minimum. Look there again. And they ate and they were satisfied. They picked up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve full baskets, <coughs> five loaves, feed. We're going to look at verse 21 in just a minute. 
but you already know what it says. There were about 5,000 men who ate besides women and children. Five loaves in the hands of Jesus. That's what could happen. Amen. That's what could happen. It doesn't say that they had 12 baskets with just a little bit in each one. 12 baskets full of leftovers. Full. Not to mention that they all ate until they couldn't eat anymore. They were satisfied. Church, do you understand that's what God can still do today? That is still what God does today. When we put our faith in Him, when we are available to Him, this is God hasn't changed. Amen. God is still the same God we're seeing here. Jesus is still the same. It, it's worth saying one more time. Our God is a God of abundant blessings. He does not do bare minimum. I hope you understand that this evening. When we make ourselves and our resources available to Him, we can't even fathom what He's going to do with them and with us. Now, 5,000 men besides women and children. <clears throat> Conservative commentators say this would be about 15,000. Those that are a little bit more on the less conservative say upwards of 20,000. I can tell you this. Five loaves just to feed 5,000 would be an impressive miracle. You hit 20,000 or more with five loaves, only God can do that. That is the mighty God we serve. And I want, to, I want you to understand this. <clears throat> this is the lesson. All of this made possible because they made themselves available to Jesus. They took what was there. He multiplies it. They, through faith, hung around, stayed with Him. Again, when we do the same thing, only God knows what He's going to do with us and through us. What we think, you know, we think we can't do this, we can't. The disciples, He told them, you feed them and they're scratching their heads. They know they can't do that. But they made themselves available to Jesus. They took what was already there. They gave it to Him. They made it available to Him. And look at the miracle He did. That's still what He does today. If you make yourself available to God, only God knows what He can and will do through you and with you. If you know you have not made yourself fully available to God, do not leave this church this evening without making that right. <clears throat> only you know if you have fully and completely made yourself available to God. You may be thinking, but I don't even know what that would look like. <clears throat> if you feel like there is more that God has called you to do, you need to talk to Him about it. Amen. If you feel like there's more you could give to His church, then you need to talk to Him about it. I promise you this, you spend a couple of evenings or a couple of mornings or sometime throughout the day and you talk to him about it, if he really wants you to do something for the church, he'll make it clear to you. When he made it very known to me that he was calling me to preach, that's all I could think about. I would sit and do my own personal Bible study. <clears throat> I would have notes after notes after notes and I remember telling Melissa, I don't know why I'm writing all these notes down. I don't think they're just for me. And I remember, plain as I can remember, sitting in the living room, I looked at her and said, I think God's called me to preach. <laughs> Y'all could have only seen her look on her face. <laughs> you? Really? I probably had the same look. I, yeah, that's what I thought too, but that's what he's telling me. But <coughs> it's about making ourselves available to God. So as we conclude our message this evening, 
First, we've seen in just the first two verses, 13 and 14, Jesus teaches us that teaches us teaches us, excuse me, that sometimes we need a rest, sometimes we need a break, even from our ministry, a small break. It may be for times of rest, it may be for times of mourning. But when that period is over, we come back and do what God has called us yes. to do. We come back to our ministry or our ministries. We may have more than one that we're involved in. Jesus did it. And if Jesus did it, it's for us to do also. We need to pay attention. And then the biggest lesson we see just how vital it is to make ourselves and our resources available to Jesus. He's still the same Jesus that stood before this crowd. He's still in the miracle working business today. I don't have to tell you all that. You guys know that. We've seen miracles here. We've heard of miracles. We've, we've heard the testimonies. This is a miracle of multiplication. This is creation occurring in his hands before them. Amen. This is not a mere parlor trick. This is he is creating new bread molecules as he keeps breaking and handing out. <clears throat> he did it here, he's still capable of doing it today. Have you made yourself available by faith? to Jesus to see what He can and will do in your life. If not, change that today before you leave. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, there's no doubt the Holy Spirit is drawing you even now, not because of anything I've said, but because of what God's Word said to us today. Say yes to Him. At this time, I'll ask Sister Debbie to come up and prepare a song here. Page 376. <clears throat> Brother Daniel gets the sound system prepared. They're getting everything set up. <clears throat> Remember, verse 18. Bring them here to me. I hope that God has used those five words to really speak to your hearts this evening. I know as I was preparing the message, it's like those five words just hit me upside the head. We're just going to do a cappella, Jerry. Jeremy, uh, her phone's not working. Okay. What page? Whatever they want to do, she said. Does everybody know 376? <laughs> Let's do the first verse and the last verse of 376. <clears throat> I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. The church is singing this song to sing. To follow Jesus. First to all those that are here. No turning back. No turning back. You know in your heart you have not made yourself available to Jesus. Come up to the altar. Confess this to him and say, Lord, I'm open to you. I'm available to you. Tell me what you had me do. To follow Jesus. If you're watching this live or you watch no this later, no you need to make yourself available to Jesus to receive salvation. All you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus paid your sin debt in full and you accept that free gift. That's all there is to it. 
We ask if you do give your life to Jesus, contact us and let us know. We don't want anything from you. We want everything for you. If you need a Bible, we'll get you a Bible. If you need a place to come out and hear God's Word and worship, you're welcome to come here and be with us if you're in the area. But you need Jesus. You need, you need to make yourself available to Jesus. We all do. <clears throat> I do thank you for your attentiveness to God's Word this evening. I'll ask Brother Chuck if you would close us out in prayer. Thank you, dear Lord, today most of all for your Son, Jesus, and all that He's done for us. Lord, we know the miracles that you've performed, and we know you can do them now. Dear Lord, just be with each and every person that hear this voice tonight, that you may, they may be open to the, to the blessings of you. Yes. Dear Lord, as we part tonight, just keep each and every one safe, keep them out of harm's way. It's in Jesus' name.